All right, why don't we go ahead and get started? Good afternoon, my name is Troy Connor. I'm here to talk to you about using Minikube Kubernetes for local Node.js development. I understand I'm in between you and lunch, so we'll, we'll get through this the best way we can. Who am I? I? Like I said, my name is Troy. I work for, I'm a cloud software developer at CloudReach. We do amazing things, too much to put on one slide. Um, I tinker with robots with, in JavaScript. I actually help maintain the Node version manager N. I don't know if you guys heard of NVM and N. I'm the N side, so you know, we're, PR is welcomed. And um, I'm a US Navy veteran, so. Woo. I, I came here because we have a problem, and whether we like to admit it or not, our job is to push out apps as fast as possible. So what does that mean? That means we have to develop a new workflow every time some new tool comes out, or we have to try to figure out the best way we can do this and still maintain our productivity like Jim Carrey is doing right now. So you know, we, that comes with a lot of excuses. You know, my code is compiling. That person doesn't work here anymore. That's more of a feature. That's the way we've always done it. But this, my favorite excuse is that it works on my machine. It does. Like, I don't know what the pro It's worked when I pushed it, right? But um, there's one problem. We're not shipping your machine. If I can give you this and put it in the cloud, it would be all set, right? But um, we came up with tools, and something to help with that was Docker, you know, because it isolates apps and containers. You pretty much make a build, put it anywhere you have Docker installed. It's going to work, right? So now you can't use that excuse. But now your workflow is, um, you know, you make your app, you blame it on DevOps, and you profit. So I like this one, because I've done that. So, you know, you assume that your problem's been solved because it doesn't, it's, it's taking the stress off the developer and put it to the team that's gonna now be responsible for putting your app in the cloud, right? But now you have a new problem. You, you build your app and then you run your local integration test and everything's fine and then the op team uses the tool to publish a new Docker image, something maybe like Jenkins, it's in their pipeline. And then the ops team comes back and says it doesn't work. Yeah, this is getting, all the time you thought you were saving by developing these new workflows to help you with these tools is, is, is gone. Now you're actually fighting with the ops team or even being part of that is what's helping you again. So you want to throw your computer out the window because it's not doing you any good. Because every time you do this, you, you're one step closer to, to blaming ops team again, right? And this is where you start to look like once you get to that level of, I don't want to do this no more. But we love doing this, don't we? So I, I mentioned the containerization part of it because I, um, where we're going with DevOps and orchestration of containers is you have Docker Swarm Kit, you have Mesos OS, you have Kubernetes. Kubernetes is what we're going to talk about when it comes to Minikube. Now, what is Kubernetes? It's an open source system for automating deployments, scaling, and management of containerized applications. That's great. I don't, I don't have Kubernetes on my laptop. We'll get there. But the problem with that, you notice that there's these problem solutions, problem solutions. The problem with what's going on with Kubernetes is when you ask somebody, hey, how easy is that for me to set it up on, uh, let's say, a cloud provider? And there's mixed reviews. They're going to say something, oh, it's simple. You know, it's easy. Or, or, or it's hard. Or depending on who you ask, on what cloud provider is going to be simple. You know, um, real good resource. And I do want to shout him out while I'm saying this. Kelsey Heisauer has a repo called Kubernetes the Hard Way. If you ever get a chance, take a look at it. It has some amazing things in there. So, and then you actually are locked in a commitment to your cloud provider if you do that. So like now, I'm with AWS or I'm with GKE. I have to stay there because of who I have Kubernetes hosted with. But you know, you use Docker locally. You know how to do that. So can I use, mini, can I use Kubernetes locally? Of course you can. Why, that's why we're here. Everyone knows what Kubernetes is or has an idea what Minikube can consist of. So I'm here to explain what is Minikube. Here is the straight definition from where you go to the repo. It's actually Kubernetes on your laptop. Simple as that. Single node VM on your computer. You're going to be using KubeCuddle to actually talk to it. And you, you can test the strategies here instead of paying for it in the cloud. This is also going to save you money because you can do everything here and then just put it there later. So what you need for Minikube to work, you need KubeCuddle. That's what's actually gonna to talk to the cluster. And um, you need VirtualBox or X Hive Drive or VMware Fusion for Mac OS. And for Windows, you, you have it listed here. And you actually need an internet connection on the first run, because on the first run, it's actually gonna download the, the Minikube ISO image and install it, and everything is gonna be there once it's set up. So as I'm working with a Mac, as you can tell, 
this is um, the simplest solution to try to install it. If you have brew, it's brew mini install Minikube. Boom, that's how you do it for Linux and Windows. So here's what Minikube can't do. And I'm, I'm putting this out there now before um, someone asks me after, the, after this talk. Um, you can't expose your application on type load balancer, and we'll get to that once I um, have the demonstration, because your laptop is not a cloud provider. So you can't actually ask it to host something for a type load balancer. So you have to use no port or cluster IP. Um, it can't help you convince your boss that you need a raise because of your awesome new DevOps skills. You can try it, but um, don't say that I told them to do that. And um, you can't use upgraded Docker versions outside of what Minikube provides. So right now, I'm using Minikube um, 21, and it uses 1.12. So all those new cool features that um, you would assume that you can use in Docker, but you can't because of what's provided with Minikube. So the, the project I'm going to demonstrate is, is something that I, I, I try to use this all the time. It's a C click fix it API. It pretty much lists all the problems and issues in the city that you're in. And then it just, I put some front end work to it. It's just an express application that's going to use this. It's stateless, so there's no, no state in, involved in here. That's just going to show you the power of how we can use Minikube to do this. So um, what I've done before we started this because of conference Wi-Fi, and I don't want to try to embarrass myself up here, I already got the Docker images already here. So they're all built. They're in the actual um, environment that I have. Um, and excuse me, I already did Minikube start. That's what's going to start the cluster. And I already um, did the, the Docker environment. So actually, I was, the, what I'm going to show you when I um, pull up the terminal is that all the images that, are, that come with Minikube, and then the images that you can make that will still be available for you in Minikube. So we're going to go to that. That looks very small. Tell me how big do I need to stop. Is that cool for everybody? Can everybody see that? All right. I have to delete this deployment because I tried this earlier. OK. So right now, if I do Docker images, right, and like I said, I have all the images from Minikube, you're going to see all these images. This is what makes Minikube run. So there's like KHDNS sidecar. You have these um, containers that the dashboard that is going to actually um, show you all these cool dashboards and stuff like that. And um, here's are the three images that I have. It's, it's called Troy 0820, Fix Vancouver, Fix Vancouver, Fix Vancouver, version 1, 2, and 3. The reason why I label them version 1, 2, and 3, if, it looks, if you tag it latest, it's going to actually try to go out to Docker Hub and get it. So just, that's just an important step to remember when you start tagging your Docker images when you're doing this. So like I can literally build an image, which I won't do because I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with the conference Wi-Fi, and, and produce this same result. So if I want to change something, I could just rebuild it and try to do something with that. So where I'm at now, if I do cube, uh, cube cuddle, I, I aliased it. So that's aliased as KB. So if you see KB, that means what's above that. Run. Fix it is going to be the name of the deployment. I'm going to press up. And I'm going to do version 1 first. Version 1. So right now, that was more of the party trick. But it, all it's doing is just creating the, the application. And that is an average because it's the wrong one. Hold on. Demo guys, don't fail me now. All right. It's called Fix Vancouver. Did I spell it wrong? B1. Thank you. I see it. All right. OK, now I'm just using this dash W flag so I can watch it build. And it's still erring. Oh, it's so big here, I can't tell. So that's what the problem is. OK, right. Fix it, Vancouver version one. All 
Okay, enough for that. I'm just going to type it out because every time I don't, it fails. Docker run, fix it, image. Finally. Okay, so I deployed the application. I, I, that took longer than it should have, because do not let this judge, don't judge me on that. Anyway, you can't see anything because it's not, there's no service for you to check it out. So like um, Minikube has statuses and actually has a dashboard. So what I'll do now is show you the dashboard to show you that the deployment actually does exist, right? And that looks real small, doesn't it? Okay. So here's the deployment, it's called Fixit, and that's the name of the pod that's actually running. And if you wanna look at the logs, you can see the, the node app that's actually started in here. It's on localhost 3000. So to see this app, you can actually have to run it on, you have to expose the app so you can see it on a, on a node port. Because like I said, you can't use type load balancer because that would be the end of the demo if I could. So what I'm gonna do is um, cube color expose, Deployment's name is Fix It, and I'm gonna expose it on port 3000, because that's where it's running, and it's an, on type no port. So if I get the service, it's gonna assign me this port right here, 31,104. But my Minikube has its own address because it's already on its VM, right? So if I wanna find, there's two ways I can do this. I can actually go to the Minikube IP, which is 192.168.99.102, or I can just say Minikube service, fix it. And it's gonna open up a window in my browser and it's gonna show me the app. So that's version one of the app. It's gonna show you that it's right here. These are all the issues that are in Vancouver, at least the first 10 at least. So I'm like, wow, that doesn't, that doesn't really satisfy me, right? That's, I can do that without putting Minikube on my laptop, right? Why do I need to keep doing this over and over again if the tools I have are sufficiently enough for me to do something. Because like um, now you can, actually, you can actually edit the deployment and you can change the version without actually having to tear down an um, image and redeploying another one. So let's search for version one and my Vim skills are not that great. And let's do version two. Now if I'm fast enough, you will see, okay, it already deleted the other container but now the new one's running. So I wasn't fast enough to actually show you what happens once you do that, but this version is different than the last version. There's a flag next to Vancouver from Fawn Awesome. So, but you can actually do this live. So like if you were actually trying to push a hotfix to a um, stateless component in your application, you can say, let me just change the image and if that container exists and, it's work and it works and they can pull it, it'll just immediately update. So the, the, your customers won't see any downtime when, he, when you come to that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete that and show you the file that exists when you make these um, deployments and make these services or whatever. So I'm gonna delete this deployment, fix it. I'm gonna delete this service, fix it. And I'm gonna actually So this one I set for two replicas because if you had an Nginx container, you can actually have a bunch of these in front, just put an Nginx container in front of it and then say, go to whichever one is being used. So like I said, I deleted the service, so you're not gonna be able to see this right now, but once I put the service up there, it's, it's gonna just be exactly like the last one. But I don't wanna show you that it's exactly like the last one. I wanna show you a different, that's why we went to the new version. So Kubernetes has this resource called Ingress. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to put stuff behind certain URLs. So you're not just spinning up a load balancer on, on the cloud, wasting your resources and saying, I can do this a smarter way. So I'm gonna deploy this resource called Ingress. And that already exists, so I don't have to do that. 
if I show you what it is. It's basically saying that service name, which is going to be fix it, which I'm going to do now, it's at the path slash fix it. So when I go to my mini cube IP, it's going to be slash fix it, and it's going to be this application that I'm going to deploy. But I still have to, I still have to expose the service on cluster IP. So now if I try to go to mini cube service like I did before, it's not going to see it. It's not going to take me there, because that service doesn't exist within the confines of no port. It exists in the confines of um, cluster IP. So I would actually have to go to the mini cube IP and take me to slash fix it. So this version of, the, of, of C click fix it actually has the pictures of what, the, um, of what was actually being reported here. So, but if you notice, I didn't deploy the Nginx part of the ingress that was in that service. I mean, it's in that ingress definition. But now it's actually at slash fix it. So say, for instance, you had like 30 microservices that you didn't want to actually make available to the load balancer and start wasting your money. You can put all of them behind the ingress endpoint, and then your application can use that. So they're still public facing. The stateless application still works. And you don't have to worry about wasting money. You can actually like, start building your app here before you put it in the cloud. And that's the reason why I, I enjoy working with it, because you, the resources that are available are going to allow you to think about how to correctly make your application without actually having the DevOps team come back and kill you. Just be honest. So like I said, you can actually, so once you find the images that, that work for you, you can retag them and then push them to whatever registry you use. If, and that's all I have. If there, I can take any questions. Any questions? I know you guys want to eat. Didn't see that light is like really in my face. Sorry, good. For the, um, the last service I did with the, um, no, I just actually exposed it to a, and used cluster IP. Now that service, once I do that, that service does exist and it, um, I can show you. If I say um, kubectl get service fix it and have the output YAML, it gives you that. So anytime you use the command line, the command line was actually trying to help people use it better. Um, because what was happening, a lot of people were making pods and they weren't using deployments to make pods that which actually come with a replica set. They were just making pods and then when they found out their pods would die and they didn't have the application no more, this came about. So that when you expose anything on the command line, it actually gives you the service automatically. And you just tell what type or what port that you're using. So anything that you have in Kubernetes, you can actually see dash O YAML and it'll give you the de definition you have which is actually helps you because you can save that and then you can actually put that in the part of, hey, this is how I want to deploy it in production and, and, and keep it in the folder or something like that. Any more? You, right there. It did. I was too slow to try to type all the commands to show you and I was trying to like get to a place where I can say, hey, kubectl get pods that watch, and then it'll tear that, it'll say terminating on one, and then it'll say container creating. But it won't, it won't terminate until the other one is um, created. Because the, the strategy that's that, that is, is a, it's rolling updates. So it'll allow you to pretty much, if you heard the term blue-green deployment, it'll allow you to do that. So I, um, the power that Kubernetes has, is what I didn't demonstrate today is like with a lot of stateful applications and what you can do on the, on the cloud. So, um, if there's any more questions with that, I, I'm gladly take them now or offline. I'll be around in the conference. Thank you.